Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to the second channel geography video. This is everyone's favorite series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I'm going to be talking about something which might not seem like it's very relevant to geography and world maps at all, but actually does have a very close link because it is the time. The time of the day or your time zone is actually something that you're all probably familiar with. It's different than people living on the other side of the world. Your time slowly changes as you shift across the world, and it actually is actually determined by your geographic location. However, because most time zones seem to be arbitrarily decided based on political rules and stuff like that, it seems Seems like you know whichever if you especially if you look at a time zone map like this one you just kind of look at them all and you say okay there's a general trend going one way and the other but it doesn't look like there's any hard or fast rules but there actually is and in today's video i want to give a very brief history of time and then explain why the world map was pivotal and why in fact time zones in a way shape the world map you know it kind of works both the uh, ways into each other and i want to explain what that means and all that in today's video hopefully you all do enjoy it but let's get straight into talking about the briefest history of time because uh, you know time is something we all just expect in our lives it's connected to every device we have you can ask them what the time is they'll know it everyone knows roughly the time of day it's something we just know and it's a key part of our lives now but time isn't something that is intrinsic to humans this is like a big like whoa man debate you can have but no uh, time is something we had to create at some point and we basically you know the easiest way we could do so was when the sun was at its tallest in the sky that was generally noon that was 12 and then we made a 24 hour clock around that blah 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 blah, blah. we got time so this was easy enough to do like oh yeah if you you know noon is when the sun's at its highest but bear in mind that when the sun is at its highest it's something that changes to part part of the world if you're in uh, you're in part of the country if you're in the southwest tip of England then the you know the sun's going to be at noon a little bit before it's going to be that in the other side of the country in let's say Canterbury for instance so there's a big difference between even the same country but it's not a big deal because if you were traveling across the country you would lose you know it would take you hours to travel a distance of minutes and it wouldn't be a big problem and plus you know like because there was no way to tell the time in between because you were measuring on this one thing it was like okay this is all fine and good until the world started getting more connected uh, railways were the biggest example but also like obviously as people are moving across the world and the country faster you need to be able to work out what time it is and there needs to be like a proper schedule especially if you're trying to catch those trains so uh, you know in America for instance you got to bear in mind there is like five hours worth of time drift between the very uh, very it's like four and a bit uh, worth of uh, time drift between the very very west coast and between the very very east coast you can't just have them pretending the same time as there so what they worked out instead is we're going to work out time and um, although uh, you know a universal time was trying to be created where they assumed there'd be a clock at the center of the world and everyone could shift their time space and that that wasn't quite so popular so what ended up happening instead is something called Greenwich Mean Time came about so Greenwich is in London or it's like loosely in London you can argue it's a separate place it's one of those things uh, but Greenwich is just over here I've been there I made a video there once and this is actually the zero uh, meridian on the earth this is the I believe it's the <laughs> I always get this one right this is the zero degree line of latitude on the earth that we all decided as an easy way to measure that's where time kind of starts so basically whenever it is noon in uh, so I guess a, a new day starts 180 degrees opposite of uh, Greenwich and Greenwich is now basically the center of the earth as far as last year goes. That's why it's called the Prime Meridian. And it's a very, very important thing that I guess kind of important, kind of interesting to me, puts London at the very center of the world. So anyway, why is, why is this so relevant? This means that every other country determines their time based on Greenwich Mean Time. They do some number of hours one way or the other. But um, again, if you if you might think, okay, well, it's easy as that then. So why are time zones not so simple? By the way, my camera is really glitching today. I don't know why. It is just, I usually it just doesn't. And today it just is anyway. So I guess we'll just say, Oops, sorry about that. But yeah, staying on subject, uh, you know, if we're going to mess up anyway, then let's hide the background and let's be spooky in the sky with like some weird... Cra yeah, this isn't this great? So yeah, basically... <laughs> <laughs> let's stay on topic for a little bit basically um you know the way uh, that each time zone was decided was uh, 15 degrees of latitude on both sides of um on both sides of uh, you know greenwich or, or like uh, basically the world was divided into little segments because there's 360 degrees on a globe there's 24 hours so logically every hour you know to, to get to every to have every you know segment be one hour you have 15 degree uh, segments that should be plus one plus two plus three plus four etc and then on the other side you get minus one minus two minus three minus four etc so that was easy enough and that means that if you look at a map it should in theory look like the very top of this thing right here whereas you can see like it's like minus four minus three minus two those should be how you divide the world up evenly and that's how things could have been and that's roughly what happened a little bit i mean it slowly phased in and it slowly looked something like that um and this uh, uh, you know this this led to some kind of complications but the truth is is that over time and uh, especially because of the weird political boundaries and stuff uh, lots of countries have kind of faded away from that and lots of countries have stopped using that as their rule uh, you know russia was the most uh, recent notable one where they said we're just going to permanently stick to summertime which means they like when they, they moved an hour basically which didn't make sense because they preferred those hours for their country but lots of countries have been moving around their stuff for a whole bunch of 
reasons. And if we look at this map again, you can actually see how lots of countries, again, these up here are the what should be the hours. This is what is based on noon, based on the UK, as you can see, zero degrees. So, you know, UK is on G GMT time, like uh, plus, plus zero, basically. Uh, for, but then for lots of countries, for some reason, do lots of weird things where they're on the slightly wrong time zones. So, uh, for instance, if you look at Iceland, they're in minus one, basically minus two. They're using minus, uh, they're using zero time zone because reasons. If you look at all of Europe, uh, France, uh, the very west parts of Germany, west parts of, uh, you know, uh, what's that country? Uh, Norway, uh, the very west parts of uh, lots of countries. Uh, if you switch to some of Switzerland, even, all these countries should be on zero, but because there's like a big European time zone, pretty much all of Europe, even a little bit to the west of plus one and, uh, you know, way to the, um, sorry, even a bit to the east of plus one and way to the west of it are actually using uh, plus one to have this kind of cohesive European experience thing. It's, it's a bit confusing, but it means that there's this big block of countries, most of the EU countries, in fact, or most of the, you know, EU area countries are actually using the exact same time zone and it makes things a lot easier for them. I mean, not for me because I live in the UK, but that's just an interesting thing you might not know. But then the other examples are way worse than this because this is kind of lots of countries independently making decisions. Lots of countries have decisions where they make lots of, I guess, unilateral decisions, which are arguably quite bad. So if we look at China, for instance, you can see how that entire country is on the plus eight time zone. That's called Beijing time. And it means that some parts of this country are actually so far out of sync with the rest, as you can see. They sh there should be some parts of China on plus five, but they're on plus eight because, you know, again, having like this national time and it creates some really bad problems for the, uh, you know, the farmers in the far west of China. There aren't that many of them, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is something that comes up. Also, I don't have arms when I do this, do I? <laughs> <laughs> I've only just realized. Let's just let's just put the background back on and deal with the glitching. So yeah, basically, I I, I shouldn't be doing this live during a video, but you know, second channel, I don't care, right? But yeah, so basically, there's lots of parts of the world which have this slightly funny thing where they are trying to stick to one time zone. Another example is India. It's not so bad because again, some of the countries on five, some of the countries on six, and a tiny bit of the countries on four, but yeah, not so important. So the whole country's on plus five and a half, which again, half time zone shouldn't exist, but India just decided we're going to make them exist. Um, another weird example is North Korea, where the whole country you know should be on or it, it, it arguably it shouldn't be on plus nine but the whole country should be like that it's on plus eight and a half for some reason uh nepal was actually the last country to switch to a proper time zone they're on 5.5 so nepal's over it, basically lots of countries do slightly weird things of it and these don't follow the proper boundaries because they have to follow the rules of the people who live there and what they want to do again if you look at the u.s this isn't like following state lines or anything loads of states are actually split in half by these lines and that's because you know th that's because they're following it normally but lots of states don't go that way and it creates this very weird map where, as you can see, even though countries, you know, the ideal time zone or like the correct time zone based on noon is like that, countries over time have you decided for political reasons to go one way, for just, you know, it's too much effort reasons to go one way, and also because countries, again, like Russia, like North Korea apparently, and like some of these other countries, are actually trying to have their time be shifted a bit more to have more daylight. That's that's why we have uh, daylight savings time, and that's one of the weird things about that. But to go back to the map then, so you might say, okay then, it's like, yeah, you said this was all about maps, but really that's just one particular map right there, right? However, if we then go back to the regular map, so let's, uh, well, you know what, let's run it in German now, let's let's do it. So basically, if we go back to the regular map, then as you can see, the, there's this thing over here, which you might have, you might have spotted on a world before. Uh, it doesn't show up on a globe, only on a flat map, right? There is no date line here, but if you go back to the flat map, as you can see, there is this mystical line with the dashes there. You can only see it from a certain distance out. And you might have always been curious as to what this is. This is the international date line, and it's a bit confusing because it, <laughs> it should be a perfect straight line, 180 degrees around the world from, again, Greenwich so it should be following that exactly right however it doesn't and the reason for this is the same thing where it's like there is a clear boundary from one to the other but you might think okay then so what is the international date line it doesn't follow a straight line uh you know for reasons like there's a bunch of reasons as to why but what is it and basically uh the the the, the consequence of having time zones which go plus 12 one way and minus 12 the other which is it's always gonna happen regardless is that eventually those two plate points meet and you have a, a place that's essentially you know like uh, let's let's call it 11:59 on one side and the other one one is like 12 or one on the other but there is a day difference between the two so even though you can seamlessly keep going around the world like that if you did you would just lose time indefinitely and it'd be a glitch so the way that that's fixed or the way that that just couldn't be allowed to happen because it's not it's not like a game where we're you know breaking out game breaking fix it's just that what the way that is uh, kind of uh, come across is that this part of the day all the way over here so where alaska is its furthest is actually still on you know whatever the day is right now let's call it the uh, 9th of june or something right so this is the 9th of 
June over here, whereas all the way on the other side, because the day so at some point crosses over, this is the 10th of June. So it's the exact same time on both sides of this, or almost the exact same time. When you cross over, it's only one hour difference. However, an entire day passes at the same time, and that's one of the fun facts you might not have known about the international dateline. So then you might say, okay, so there's a magical point on the Earth, which once you sail over, you gain a day or you lose a day. Again, uh, if, you're, if you're going from the 21st to the 20th, you gain a day. If you go from the 20th to the 21st, the same time is there but you just cross over a day. And uh, you know, the argument to that is like, oh yeah, if you permanently cross from one to the other, you do gain or lose a day permanently, but it's one day. That day doesn't really just get gained or lost. You just, your time gets reset in a way. And it, it's a weird little thing, but that is the international date line. However, you then might say, so why is it not a straight line? And the obvious easy answer is like, well, I mean, we're gonna cut off Russia and have them be on a separate day. So that makes sense. What's on America is on one side, Russia's on the other. There is a literal day dividing the two countries, which I think is kind of cool actually. Uh, but also uh, these kind you know, this part right here is the other big, questionable thing and you might say what's the deal with that well basically all of the countries uh, you know there's lots of micronations in the pacific ocean it's not you know mostly made of big countries like you know hawaii used to be an okay not even really okay slice country but you know uh, basically the pacific ocean is not made up of many big countries however there are lots of countries in there and sometimes they're doing business with each other and because of the big time zone even though there's only two hours difference between a, a country over here and a country over there the time you know the date gap made it really really tricky so they figured for business purposes and just because why not they would go all the way to to instead of, uh, you know, so instead of going to minus eight or minus 12 or whatever, they went from minus 12 or minus 10 to being plus 14. So that means even though there should only be minus 12 to plus 12, you know, and then they match up uh, and stuff like that. And instead, they're just, it keeps on going over here and it creates this very weird anomaly where there's a few countries like Kiribati over there. That's right, Kiribati's are in and everything um, who are on very confusing time zones. Oh, look, there's London. Isn't that a fun little coincidence? So yeah, that's Kiribati, um, one of the confusing countries on a ridiculous time zone all the way over there, just so they can trade with Australia and other, you know, little island nations in the Pacific. And uh, there is a fun fact you might not have known about the world. We're all decided by this magical map, uh, sorry, this magical map right here. But then every country decided, you know, what, what if the magical map didn't con did control us? And because of that, the world is going to be harder and harder to properly like navigate times. But should be told, time isn't a tricky thing for most people. Uh, time isn't a tricky thing for really anyone. But we're not using correct time. And is that a problem? I think most people say, yeah, this is like a big problem where over time, time drip drips. But I think, you know, every country should have the right to decide what time it is for themselves, even if it's confusing and even if it's like, you know, objectively wrong. That's all I'm saying. And I hope you did all enjoy today's video uh, talking about it just a little bit. Um, it's the second channel. I'm sorry for the glitching camera. Could I make it better by like going transparent maybe and showing you like, oh, look, I have no arms. Is, is this fun? Does this, does this make your life better? Does this make up for all the glitching? Maybe. I don't know. But I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, because I will see you in the next one. Second channel, don't care. <laughs> what, why, why, why are my hands half glitching out? Whatever, anyway.